What's up ladies and incels? I'm back again for a long awaited video, I suppose. And uh, as you can tell by the intro and the thumbnail and the title and stuff, you already know what we're here to talk about. So before we get to that, housekeeping notes as per usual. Make sure you're checking us out on Instagram at MadMaxLOP. Make sure you're checking out the website. There's only one article out right now, but we're working on it. Max, M A X X L O P dot com. And if you want to help the channel some more, we got the Patreon, patreon.com slash MadMaxGuns. So, let's get into it. I'm new to hunting. Uh, this is going to be my first full season doing um, medium deer hunting. Uh, I was a, more of a bird hunter last year, waterfowl to be specific. And I went out a couple times for deer, but it was uh, aimless. And I was just going standing in a tree stand without knowing if there was any critters walking by. And uh, this year we're taking it a little more seriously. And in the theme of that... I went a little overboard with my first hunting rifle. Um, I say first, but really my first was a Post 64 Model 7308 that my father gave me that I never actually shot yet. I kind of do want to uh, take it out and play with it, but like I do with things, I tend to go overboard. And this right here is my first hunting rifle. And it is 100 spent purpose built it is as lightweight as I could get it comfortably for hiking around because last year when I went and stood in the stands I was carrying around a probably a 17 pound rifle and we'll get right to the weight of this this is seven pounds and I gotta run down seven pounds six ounces Bear rifle, add a magazine, seven pound, twelve ounces, five round steel AICS. I'm pretty sure I could get a hunting mag somewhere, but six ounces, not too bad. First, we're going to talk about the whole build of the rifle, um, everything in it. I wrote an article for the MDT blog that I'll link below. There were some minor changes on it since then. We'll talk a little bit about the performance. Uh, some stuff that I could use some help from you guys with and um, yeah let's get into it we'll start from the heart of the rifle to action and work our way outwards and uh, we got a fusion TI by Lone Peak Arms it is a titanium action lightweight it's got integral recoil lug integral rail but as a as it's a hunting action you only have two sections you don't have going straight through. It's got a nice fluted bolt. It's a 700 platform. It's got a recessed bolt nose, uh, 90 degree bolt throw. Nice and smooth, but it's very deliberate. And it's not like silky smooth and it doesn't make much noise like some of the match actions would. But it's a custom 700 clone, lightweight, titanium, strong. Screwed into that is a 308 well, it's a 30 cal proof research barrel that I chambered in 308. Um, I, you know, I don't know what you'd consider this because it is carbon fiber wrapped, so it's not like it's got the profile of a number seven or an M40 profile, but it's sleeved in carbon fiber, so it's not heavy like an M40. Obviously, side note. MBT just did a nice video on the used tubes burning down a carbon fiber barrel in a titanium action. It was pretty neat. They didn't shoot a group before and after, which they talked. They told it you why. It's really not safe to do it with all the fumes and everything, and he couldn't get a good cheek weld for it. So he just didn't do it, which makes sense. But it handled it. Um, it didn't like burn out on him, and he did a, a thousand yard burn down like nonstop. Let's get back on track. Carbon fiber proof barrel, MDT Elite muzzle brake. It works great. Recoil management, loud as shit, but you know it's part of the game. Um, I probably would end up putting a lightweight suppressor on this down the road if I, depending on how this year goes, we'll see. Trigger. Initially, I had a 
Trigger Tech primary on here, the adjustable from one to four pounds. Um, I ended up putting a Trigger Tech Gold Diamond in here, a Trigger Tech Diamond Gold Edition in here because I had it, and I I made it as heavy as it can go, and it's a nice crisp, uh, like a 1.2 pound right now. Probably a little light for hunting, but it's the trigger that I'm used to because I shoot diamond on my match gun, and so I know where it's gonna break, which is nice. Uh, some people might say you're gonna still want a heavy break because if you're shooting gloves or whatever, maybe. We'll see, we'll adjust as needed. But as of now, I'm very used to the diamond trigger, so that's what I'm using. Up top, this one is what took a lot of deliberation. I wanted a lightweight scope, something with high quality glass, and I ended up stumbling upon this VX5 HD 3 to 15 by 44 loophole on an auction, and I got it for like 60% of what retail is, so I went for it. Uh, it's the first MOA scope I've had in a very long time. It's a second focal plane duplex reticle, but it's hunting. I'm not going to be doing any holdovers. Hopefully I'm not taking long shots at all. Dial if needed after I get my range, take the shot. That should be all it is. However, I will say this is capable of shooting out to distance, but not what it's for. Uh, I know that's a big debate in the hunting community is ethical shots and all that stuff. So I don't plan on shooting anything past 200 yards with this while I know it's very capable of doing that. <coughs> it's a very lightweight scope, excellent glass. If you're familiar to the Mark V series of optics, the glass is very similar to that. It's got side parallax adjustment from, let's see what we got, below 50, but the first um, marking is 50 out to infinity. Parallax is important. You gotta have the image and everything on the same plane or else you could make a fatal mistake or an unfatal mistake which would be not very humane. Yeah that. Like I said 3 to 15 uh, it's same size as the typical 3 to 9's which is nice. They're sending some lightweight night force rings to round off the uh, lightweightness of it and the major thing that makes this as light as it is is the MDT HNT 26. It is a 26 ounce carbon fiber chassis and it is light. It's comfortable, it's adjustable, and it's everything you can ask for in a chassis, in a hunting chassis. I got decided to get the model with the Arca rail built in just in case I decide to do some tripod shooting or whatever. Just gives you more options than not having it. It also has M-Lock slots on the sides here and on top. I, I don't know what you necessarily might be mounted up there, the thermals, whatever, maybe. Um, it's got QD cups front and back and adjustable length of pull using these spacers. And if you want to adjust the cheek weld up or down, I'm using low rings so you don't have to do that. But overall, the package is outstanding. You walk around the woods with it, you forget it's there. Every piece on here, except arguably maybe the muzzle brake, is purpose designed to be a lightweight hunting piece of kit. And I would say is premium. I'm sure there's other brakes out there that would be better, but this is what we're working with. So, that is the rifle. Now if you want to talk about performance, I'm new to hunting guns, like I said before. I don't want to burn this down doing low development and just taking out to range and banging steel with it, which I have done a little bit. I haven't done any low development with it. I'm assuming you want to do all your shooting on a cold bore. However, to me that feels like it would take a crazy amount of time. I got some Hornady 150 grain hunting rounds for it that I might do some low development with when I have extra time or when I'm going out to range to do something else. I'll take three shots, let the, everything cool down, take three shots of a different load, let it cool down, three shots. Because I, I, I don't find that a five shot group would be necessary with the hunting rifle because the barrel's going to be heating up and you might get inaccurate data for when I think, for me, I could be wrong on this, when you're shooting a hunting rifle, if you're taking more than two shots in a short period of time, something has gone horribly wrong or horribly right. Tell me if I'm wrong on that but that's just my way of looking at it. So I'm gonna be doing low development with this with 
three round groups for the future. But I did shoot some uh, groups with some factory match grade ammo and with Burger 185s I'm shooting like three quarter inch groups. I will say this isn't as easy to shoot as say my competition build as this is seven and a half pounds and that is 22 pounds and everything is purpose built for stability and everything. This I could put up on, on a branch or something, get stable enough to take a 50 to a 200 yard shot on a kill zone of a white tail. Overall, I am very impressed with this rifle. Again, new to me, uh, I'm new to this whole space, and I'm just very excited to harvest some meat. So, performs well, it's light as shit, it's all high quality stuff. Now, we just gotta wait for deer season and uh, go to town with it. That's the rifle, guys. I know this wasn't a super exciting video, but that's a breakdown. If you have any question on the parts, um, little want some more details on it, drop them in the comments, hit me up on Instagram. Um, if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, as always, eat a dick. Even if you hit the thumbs down, it counts as engagement to the algorithm. So, fire away, click away, type away. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Make sure you're subscribed, too. Don't forget that one. It's a... It's... Um,